Hey, Lost to Sea TV. We're on the historic St. Augustine seawall, and directly behind me is the north mooring field for the St. Augustine Municipal Marina. You can see there are a lot of sailboats here. It's a very popular sailing destination, and there's lots of really great reasons for that that we'll be talking about this season. The best thing about the North Mooring Field is the view by far, because right over here we have the Castillo de San Marcos, the fort that's been defending St. Augustine for 450 years. You'll be sharing some waters with history, my friends. On the opposite side, of the North Mooring Field is the Bridge of Lions. It is a drawbridge, so you will have to coordinate with the bridge tender to get through. On the other side of the Bridge of Lions, we have another mooring field, as well as the Municipal Marina and all of its facilities. By far the most convenient place to come ashore in St. Augustine. So what happens when an adrenaline junkie marries a drama queen and they travel around the world on a catamaran? Come see the places, meet the people, and enjoy the experiences that make each destination special. And learn why traveling by boat provides more than just transportation, but a path to real adventure. And adventure builds character. Or was it characters? Either way, what is the worst that can happen? Stay tuned for more at lostatsea.tv. In the Colonial Corner in St. Augustine and we're doing some tours and learning a little about the history of St. Augustine and some of the exhibits here are quite nautical in nature and I came across this which is an important piece of information for those of you navigating even to this day in St. Augustine is that one of the difficulties sailors had with St. Augustine all through history was the shifting channels and in sand in the inlet as the constant shifting of St. Augustine's hazardous sandbars changed the channels through the harbor's inlet from the Atlantic Ocean several times a year. Pilots who knew these waters well became a valuable resource for the town as they escorted supply ships into the bay. So definitely make sure you're checking your cruising guides and you have a good understanding of St. Augustine and its sandbars when navigating the St. Augustine Inlet. Lots more to come from the Colonial Quarter. You might be wondering why Lost the Sea TV chose St. Augustine for their pilot episode. And the reasons are right here in the Colonial Quarter. St. Augustine, right here, is our nation's oldest European seaport. It's been used for centuries as a haven, a transportation post, source of food, and naval base. St. Augustine was always on the water, first located at the present day site of the Fountain of Youth, and then Anastasia Island until it was settled in its present location. How many places can you go and see nautical history like this? This is showing us a little bit of what a historical boat right might have looked at. And when Europeans entered the age of exploration, the Atlantic Ocean was not seen as a, a barrier to travel, but a method for reaching new worlds. Boat rights designed and built new ships, repaired those damaged by storms and reefs and sandbars and attacked by other ships. And St. Augustine continues that tradition to this very day. St. Augustine has some of the best boat yards for hauling out, bottom painting, even to this day. We get almost all our work done exclusively in St. Augustine. They're one of the few places that have good enough facilities or large enough facilities to be able to haul out a catamaran as big as Valhalla. We've spent a lot of time here in St. Augustine, not just enjoying the many restaurants and pubs and things to do, but we, we've been doing a lot of historical research specifically on pirates. And you might think, why is St. Augustine so concerned with piracy? And, and the reason is this settlement had been attacked and plundered and burned to the ground so many times in history. There is real pirate history in St. Augustine. In May 28, 1586, Spanish lookouts spied the sails of Sir Francis Drake's pirate fleet. There were 150 Spanish soldiers armed with 14 brass cannons manning the wooden fort against Drake's fierce army of 2,000 pirates. Then on plunder rather than conquest and occupation, Drake burned 
St. Augustine to the ground. One of the next things we're going to take a look at really has a lot to do with the pirate history of St. Augustine. There have been so many battles and so many situations where pirates or invading armies had come and burned the wooden structures of St. Augustine. The Spanish began an amazing construction product for their day, building the Castillo de San Marcos out of Coquina. Coquina, one of its one of amazing properties, of course, is it's pretty much impervious to fire. After the Spanish constructed the Castillo de San Marcos, St. Augustine never fell again. Hey everyone, we just finished our tour at the Colonial Corner and ended up at the, the Bull and Crown Pub here in St. Augustine. While I was going through my Facebook status updates, I found out something very important. Today, December 30th, is International Bacon Day. I thought that was a good reason to celebrate. And it just so happens, here at the Bull and Crown, one of their specialties is a Bacon Bloody Mary. I've known a lot of sailors in my time, and quite a few of them are big fans of Bloody Marys. I've been on some ships where that was the official breakfast. So, here we go. Bacon. Oh, hey everyone. I was just adding this to my wish list on Amazon. I don't know if they have them in stock. If you find me one and want to forward it to me, you can find our contact information in three places. Our website, lostatsea.tv, our Facebook page, and our YouTube channel, lostatsea.tv. Easy to remember, it rhymes.